Hello, everyone, and welcome to CVHP News. I'm Sonora Scott. It's Thursday, June 25th. As of yesterday, June 24th, there are 272 total positive cases of COVID-19 in Tongren County. 123 of those are active and being monitored, and 11 people are currently being hospitalized. The city reported 16 new cases yesterday. Also regarding city news, the city of San Angelo is still seeking public input in a survey about suddenly service. There are just a few questions you can answer. That survey is online on the city's website and ours. Now, with the rise of COVID-19 cases, some are wondering how officials will handle regulations. Our Amanda Lozano has more from County Judge Steve Floyd. Tom Green County Judge Steve Floyd says that while he'd rather not reinstate restrictions, the increase in the number of positive cases in the area is concerning. We have certain events that are coming up within this community, the annual drag boat races. The county, we're hosting the Far West Texas Judges and Commissioners Conference in August. We'll have to monitor how, what our current situation is. We're thinking if we take some actions now, uh, then we'll feel much better about allowing them to proceed with those kind of activities and things. He says a big topic of conversation is face masks and that local officials have the authority to mandate businesses to require them for employees and customers. There's been some uh, some light discussion. I don't think there's any appetite to do that here, but of course it does not keep those business owners or proprietors if they choose to require them, they're free to, to do so. Judge Floyd also says that while the number of cases is rising, he is grateful Tom Green County isn't seeing the same problems as other areas across the state. The hospitals are in good shape as of this morning. They believe they're in good shape. They have good supplies. They're getting their test results are starting to get delayed again because of the number of testing that's going on statewide. So it's taking a little longer. And as citizens to do their part to contain the virus. We like the general public be aware of the situation, assess that risk themselves, and realize that um, you know it's not just them that we're concerned about, it's the people they're surrounding with, their family members, their friends. You know, fi my family and friends live in this community, so I want all of us to be safe. For News Connection, I'm Amanda Lozano. Thanks, Amanda. Now it's time for the latest story in Victor Glenn's segment called Our Water. In 2019, the Texas Legislature enacted legislation to create a new regional flood planning process to help protect Texans from floods, recurring and devastating natural disasters. Now, the Texas Water Development Board is getting the ball rolling on a massive project. This is fairly new. There, well, there has been a lot of uh, flood just technology reduction, technology related work all, of the, all over the world. Netherlands has amazing flood risk reduction technology and what they're doing at the statewide flood planning at the scale of what we're trying to do in Texas is fairly new. The first ever regional flood planning process will depend on local participation and leadership. They're looking to fill hundreds of spots, but so far the TWDB has had an underwhelming number of applications. The local leadership is instrumental in making the state flood plan work. Every part of Texas is different, has unique flood challenges, unique terrain, unique weather, weather patterns. Uh, so we really can't do this without local leadership. And we want people in the community uh, to come together and bring forward a flood plan that will identify the risk in their community, that will identify uh, where there is lack of assessment of risk. To apply, fill out a nomination form available on the Texas Water Development Board website. For Our Water, I'm Victor Glenn. For more Our Water stories, visit ConchoValleyHomePage.com slash water. Thanks, Victor. Now, some social media posts have been circulating, bringing attention to the ongoing fight ranchers and producers are facing. It's an issue that consumers are impacted by as well. You might have seen higher prices in the grocery stores, especially for beef products, and you could see increased prices for a bit longer. Experts say there's not a shortage of beef or meat products. There's still the same number of cattle ready for harvest. It's, it's an issue with the places that process that meat. However, there is a way you can help balance your budget while also helping local ranchers. That's to purchase an animal directly from the rancher and take it to a smaller processing plant. 
quite honestly, that's the most inexpensive way to do it. You have to have freezer storage space in order to be able to hold that product for an extended period of time. Uh, but you know, having, having the ability to do that, you get exactly what you want, you know, exactly what that animal was fed, where that animal came from. And there are a lot of those facilities all across. Uh, we have several here in the Concho Valley. There's an extended report on this issue, as well as the debate surrounding country of origin labels on our website. Now, let's check in with Jay Martin, who has a look at our weather. Hey, Jay. Well, today we're going to be seeing another nice day, pretty average for us this time of year. 93 hitting our temperatures, a little bit less cloud cover this, this day, and we're going to see plenty of sunshine for us. We'll see one or two clouds rolling back in. Still, again, staying cool, low 70s for us. We're going to keep with that for a couple more days before we start to see it warm back up. Now you are seeing a little bit of some showers possible in the most eastern counties of the Concho Valley, so not everyone's going to be seeing them. There'll be one or two showers popping up during the heat of the day, and then we'll dry it out for the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Really starting to warm up on Sunday with 97, and then our next rain chances are going to be Tuesday. They're going to be afternoon showers and a few storms, actually, along with triple digits for our highs beginning July. Thanks, Jay, and thank you all for joining me for CVHP News. Don't forget to follow KLST and KSAN on Facebook and all social media and download our free app. All you have to do is search Concha Valley homepage in your app store. That's all for right now, but we'll see you right back here tomorrow morning. Have a great day, everyone.